tonight uh, we are going to uh, talk about the blind man straw I'm here with Dave Frakes from Industrial Cigar Company he's one of the owners here mm -hmm. and they have a very special thing called the blind man straw and I'm gonna kick it over to you to explain what that is okay thanks Ron thanks for uh, and welcome everybody from uh, Tales of the Lounge and we're in the twitch universe is that where we're at we are right in now? the twitch universe very nice so uh, good evening everybody we are uh, at Industrial Cigars we are in Frisco Texas and uh, uh, we have a nice little lounge here that uh, specializes in unique cigars. And a big part of what we built our business on is, is education and uh, educating people on cigars. And one of, the, one of the ways to do that and really expose people to uh, a number of different cigars is to eliminate what we call being blinded by the label. And uh, many of you guys, have probably, guys and gals, have probably been sitting there smoking a cigar and it's got your favorite uh, label on it and you're sitting across from somebody, maybe you're new to cigars, and you're sitting there and somebody goes, oh, uh, acid, huh? Yeah, it's not, uh, not real good. And you, uh, all of a sudden you're going, well, I've been smoking cigars for a couple of years, maybe a year, and this guy's been smoking cigars forever. So this is, I guess, what bad tastes like at least in their opinion. So what we wanted to do was take the whole label out of the equation. And what we've done is we've created a system called Blind Man's Draw. We change the assortment every month and we actually have a website that you go to when you get your Blind Man's Draw that you can actually go in and do the review. So it will, gu it will guide you through the review. But if you're here in Frisco, what we do is when you buy a Blind Man's Draw, one of the things we want to do is help you identify the flavors that are in cigars and more importantly learn how to evaluate a cigar so what we will do is we'll take us we know what they are we have taken the labels off and then each cigar in the pack actually has a number on it and typically in the blind man's raw pack you're going to get five or six cigars typically is about 60 to 80 dollars worth of cigars the pack costs 50 dollars and what we do is we sit down and smoke the first one with you. And um, with a lot of times when you're, when you're evaluating a cigar, there, there are notes and flavors that you pick up, but because it's carried in with the flavor of tobacco, it sometimes will get covered up. And, and for some people, they taste something, they just don't know what it is yet. So what we do is we smoke this cigar together. So as we're smoking the same cigar, I may be able to take my uh, knowledge of flavors and identify some of those and see if we're getting them together. So we actually would smoke the first one together. Tonight, we're gonna smoke a cigar. Uh, Ron does not know what that cigar is. I'm blind. He, he is blind. <laughs> and we are going to, uh, we're gonna smoke the cigar together. But, um, there, there are a number of different notes. There are uh, a kind of a spectrum of flavor wheel, and there is a spectrum of colors, I have, or a spectrum of flavors. I have a tendency when I smoke a cigar, and, and uh, you know everybody has their own method. In my case, I see color. So when I smoke a cigar, if it's got a lot of espresso notes, dark chocolate notes, coffee notes, I see that dark red, to uh, different shades of brown to black. I, I see that. If I'm smoking a lighter cigar, a more floral cigar, it's kind of in that oranges and yellow kind of color spectrum. And that's, that's one way for me to identify some of these, the various notes. There are also notes that are very apparent because of the tobacco that they use that has a, a certain flavor characteristic. When a blender, a master blender is doing their cigars, they're really a chef. And they're using tobacco that all has different flavor characteristics. Some is peppery, some might be buttery, some may be oaky. There, there are a number of different um, flavor profiles that are assembled when they put the cigar. And they're really trying to blend it so that a, there's certain tobacco that if it was on its own, we're smoking a cigar with just some of this binder or filler or wrapper by itself, it would be really difficult to smoke. But when you blend it with other tobaccos, everything kind of finds its harmony. And then every, every blender kind of has their signature. 
Um, some blend to the heavier side, some blend to the milder side. Um, I, I personally like a medium profile cigar. I don't like a lot of pepper or a lot of oil in the, in the tobacco so that that gets out of the way so I'm able to taste the cigar. At Industrial Cigars, we have a lot of really high-end, high-quality cigars where they've used some of the best tobacco in the world that has the age on it. Age is your friend. So when you smoke something that has great age on it, it you want it, you want those spices and that pepper, and that heavy oily oiliness to get out of the way, so you can really enjoy it. I, I would like I, of course, I associate everything with food, but if you imagine. You may have a mediocre Mexican plate that doesn't have a lot of flavor going on, but by the time they cover it with spicy pico and things like that, it kicks the overall experience up. But if you concentrate, you may find out that it's just the spice and the pepper that's in there. It's covering up for something that there's not a lot going on. I've noticed that there are some cigars on the market today that they use lower quality tobacco, which doesn't have a lot of flavor, traditionally, and then they'll throw a couple leaves in the cigar with that is notorious for black pepper, white pepper, red pepper, that it, it confuses your palate to think that it's actually a full bodied cigar. But when you, when you get past that, if you concentrate past that, then that, that really goes away. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna smoke the cigar together. Um, in, the, in this case, I've already cut mine. Have you cut yours, Ron? Uh, uh, it's cut. It's, it has a V cut. So for those of you guys, I'll hold it up to the camera. This has a V cut. Um, versus a straight cut. There are straight cuts, straight cuts, there are punch, there are V-cuts. I personally like a V-cut. The reason for that is because when the smoke comes out of the cigar, the smoke is turbulent. When it's turbulent, it's cool. And when it's cool, there's less of a chance of bitterness. I want to taste the cigar. I don't want to feel the cigar. So for us, a V-cut is really an ideal way to go. Sometimes on small cigars or uh, inexpensive cigars, the cap really can't handle the the pressure that a V cap puts on it. Sometimes that that cap will crack away. But in this case, the depth is always perfect. It gets through the binder. It gets through into the filler. So um, just the basics of cigar itself is wrapper. Um, that is 40 to 50 percent of the flavor. So when people come into the shop, a lot of times we'll talk about the wrapper of that cigar and what the flavor characteristics are of that particular cigar. Uh, this particular tobacco, the wrapper is from Ecuador, and um, so you can you can. It's it's amazing to think that just two leaves represents about half of the flavor. What holds the cigar together is binder. Typically, that's um, a, a very passive tobacco. Doesn't have a lot of flavor, but it's got thickness and it's got strength, so it's going to hold the shape of the cigar. And then your filler is going to be an assortment of tobaccos. This one happens to be an assortment of tobaccos. I'm not going to tell you what they are because I don't want to give it away. But uh, this has a wide, so, uh, a wide assortment of very high quality tobaccos. I also mentioned that age is your friend. And um, tobacco itself goes through a fermentation process. That fermentation process from when they stack the tobacco after it's been dried, they stack it in a very organized compost pile. When that a chemical reaction starts to happen. Actually, the tobacco gets up to about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. But at 12 months of that being stacked, it starts kicking off ammonia, straight ammonia. And that process will go on for another four to five months, depending on the tobacco and which country it's in. Because a lot of times humidity and heat have a, a big factor uh, involved in that. <clears throat> so there are some companies, I won't name names, but there are some companies that will put that 16 month old tobacco into production. And they're trying to fill orders and it's, and it's typically when I talk about blinded by a label, it's all labels that you've seen because you see it everywhere. Um, when you have a cigar like this, where you have filler that's six to eight years old, you have a cigar that has been rolled and once it's rolled, it sits post roll for four years. I'm telling you, the, what that does to the flavor completely smooths that really out. Changes. So, um, but the Blind Man's Raw was really created for a way for people that want to experiment. They don't want to have the preconceived notion they don't of what it is. Blinded. They don't want to be label blinded. And there are certain cigars, there are certain brands under an umbrella that have a perception in the market. I'm going to say, for example, Macanudo. Macanudo is a well-known brand. Um, 
but it is known for extremely mild cigars. I rate cigars one to 10, they're typically a one or a two. Very, very, very mild. There's also not a lot going on. Right. It's, I always liken it to, you know, smoking post-it notes. There's just not a whole <laughs> lot going on. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, there are guys that blend eight, nines, and tens, and those you kind of wake up in your own drool, and it's just a whole, it's a whole other <laughs> program. So, um, this, this particular cigar is really a perfect five, six, in my mind. Now, when Ron smokes it, to him it might be a little stronger or it might be a little bit more mild. It all depends. The simple fact of the matter is, is, is what you taste is what you, if you like it, that's what you like. I'm not gonna tell you what you like. But the key is- Unless it's Kirkin. Unless it's Kirkin, then <laughs> yeah. Nobody likes Kirkin. <laughs> friends don't let friends smoke Kirkin. <laughs> but um, the, you know, I think that with, with, when you get a quality cigar, now you'll notice this particular cigar would be considered kind of a, Corona Plus, or, or a little bit longer Robusto in its size. Um, for those of you that are out there that are new to cigars, don't fall for the trap where you get a cigar that's this big and this big around and it's six bucks, eight bucks, 10 bucks. It, it's, you're dealing with a cigar that's loaded with a bunch of tobacco that's probably not the highest quality tobacco. And from a purist perspective, the smallest ring gauge like what's called a Lancero, long skinny cigar. That's actually the best way to smoke a cigar because you get more wrapper to filler as it relates to the ratios. Right. So I like in a Lancero, if you're a spirits drinker, Ron, I know you've had a drink before. Um, the a spirits drinker would take a, a Lancero, a very long skinny cigar, would be like scotch neat. And if you have a cigar about this size, it's gonna be like scotch with a rock in it. And if you get some of those really large cigars, it's gonna be like scotch with water and the rocks. And when you get some really big, cheap cigars, it's like rum and coke. Yeah. You taste more coke than you taste rum, depending on who poured it. So, um, what we'll do is we'll start smoking the cigar and we'll talk about some of the notes that come out. Well, one thing I wanna go over, what is your process the first time you pick up a cigar? Mm -hmm. You don't, you've never, never, mm -hmm. never seen it, never done anything with it. What's your process for evaluating it? First, the very first thing that I do is I smell the foot, and I'm talking about sticking in your nose and smell it. But smell the foot of the cigar. A lot of the flavors that you're gonna get, also when you smoke a cigar, I want you to think about this. 40 to 50% of your enjoyment of the cigar is smelling your own smoke. So if you're sitting outside, there are times that you may have a cigar that wasn't as good as the one you had inside. Same cigar, just tasted different. Well, the reason for that is, is the flavor is being blown down the street by mother nature. Right. So um, what I want to do is I want to smell the foot. I've seen people, I see them every day in our shop, pick up a cigar in cellophane. Yeah. And unless they're like a drug sniffing dog, uh, they smell the cellophane. Cellophane smells just like cellophane. <laughs> um, so take the cigar out and smell the foot. In this case, a lot of what you're smelling is what you're going to taste. And, and the part of this process that is so important is there are flavors that you'll pick up, but your mind doesn't know what that flavor is. There's, there's, let's just say it's cedar, for example. You may taste that cedar, but because it's being brought in with smoke, with tobacco smoke, you know, you've recognized it, you've had that flavor before, you've, you know, something's happened before, but you can't connect the dots. I, I, I always say it's like, if my mom never, if my mom gave me oranges every day, and I ate an orange every day, but she never told me what it was called, I would only know what it tastes like until somebody goes, oh, you're eating oranges. Then I can connect the dots that an orange equals this flavor. And that's really what happens here when we start talking about cedar and oaky and grass and, and some of these things. And so many times, when you see read reviews where somebody says a cigar is oaky, they're not tasting an oak tree, but what they're getting is the smell of oak leaves burning. And a lot of times, because scent takes you back to your oldest memories, there are certain scents that come out of these cigars that trigger a memory that you have. You know, we're from Nebraska. We didn't take leaves and put them on the curb and somebody took them. We burn them. And there's a very distinct smell, and you smell that, and you go, I've smelled that before. 
Um, we have a particular cigar called the Atabe, uh, which is our, our finest cigar in the store. But that cigar smells like my grandpa's pipe smell. Oh, I love that smell. And there's that smell, and when I smelled that, I could see it. I could see picking it up when I was a little kid. I could, because it just brings those memories back. So a lot of these, certain cigars become favorites because there's a certain scent that triggers a real positive um, memory. A, a real positive memory. And one thing you also mentioned uh, about the, uh, the blenders is they're, they're creating a dish just like you would uh, a chef would. And as such, you taste a, uh, a chef's dish and you taste those flavors and you're not sure what they are and you, you recognized it and you really don't not sure what it is, mm -hmm. but you get the same thing with the cigars, the, the, the blends of different flavors and scents will come together and sometimes it's hard to place them. You know you really like it, but you're going, now what is that taste that I'm tasting? Yeah. And until you find somebody who's with you and goes, oh, that is wild cherry or, 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 or the oakiness. Oh yeah, that's what I'm tasting. And that's what you want to look for when you start doing something like right. this. So the way the blind man draw is structured, we smoked this first cigar together in an effort to help you um, identify some of the notes and some of the, the different characteristics. We then use the, the reviewing system that Cigar Journal Magazine uses when they evaluate a cigar. And they're evaluating look, finish, feel, performance, flavor profiles. And so when you go into our website, when you go into the Blind Man Draws website, it'll ask, actually ask you which number cigar are you reviewing? And then you go through and it's asking you questions. So it's really forcing you to concentrate. A lot of times just have a cigar, we're gonna have a drink, we're just gonna sit here and talk. You get done with the cigar, how was it? Oh shit, I don't know, I wouldn't even concentrate. And that's but, why I've been looking forward to this because one, I don't know squat, and two, I wanted the opportunity to sit down with somebody who knows a lot more than I do and go over this evaluation process and get an idea of what I should be doing when I'm sitting down and relaxing with a cigar. Right. Because it's all about the enjoyment. It is. So let's, so let's do a couple things to get started. Number one, we've smelled the foot. I'm getting, it's, it's, it's very sweet. <clears throat> when you, if, if you do this and you go into a, into a humidor, if you smell the foot of that cigar and you smell any ammonia, put the cigar down. Just walk away, it is not worth it. What happens when you're smoking a cigar that means the tobacco's too young, when you smell that ammonia, it's really pungent. It's it's not pleasant. When you smoke it, it actually tastes bitter. And people confuse bitter with strong. Right. Bitter is bitter. There are strong cigars that are very clean. Well, that's like the same thing with coffee. You know, there's right. a lot of people who like strong coffee, and what they really like is that intense bitterness. Right. Right. So they're actually kind of confusing the issue because right. there's act there there are. And, and particularly with coffee, and so much of it is about the temperature that the coffee is cooked at. At, at boiling at 212 degrees, it actually burns the coffee. Right. Um, you, you really need to make coffee at 190. So here's, here's as we're going to evaluate a cigar, these are the steps that I would go through as, let's say, a manufacturer was coming in here and wanting us to, to, to uh, offer our, their line on our floor. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to smell it. nice sweetness to this there is absolutely zero ammonia mm, super super sweet i'm looking at the wrapper it shines it's very shiny it's very very well constructed um look at the caps we have the v cut on this we smelled the foot i'll smell and see if there's any aroma that's coming off the wrapper this one doesn't have as much as you have in the foot then what i'll do is what's called a cold draw and actually puff, puff on the cigar. And a lot of those flavors that you're gonna get with this cigar, you will get when you do the pre-draw. So you what I do is I pull it in, pull it in, push it through your nose. Kind of like a retro hail, but a cold retro hail. Exactly. So, um, one of the things that we'll, we'll show you when we were doing, what, 
Ron's talking about is a retro hail. And it is one of the keys that's critical to uh, the review of a cigar, uh, is the retro hail. Because we smell and, and we get our flavors from that. I know if I walk in the house and my wife's cooking, I don't have to see that she's cooking and I don't have to taste what she's cooking to know that she's cooking. And I can walk in at a certain time and go, onions, garlic, I can smell that stuff. So, so much of what you do is smell. So when we retrohale, which is exhausting out of our nose at the very end, you don't want to do it at the front end, unless you've got some seriously strong nostrils. <laughs> but at the very end, you'll just release a little bit of smoke out, out through your nose and then, and then breathe back in. And so much of the flavor becomes apparent. The other thing that that does is as soon as you breathe in, it turns your palate from, let's say, a five to a 10 real quick. And it actually makes your palate work better. So um, you'll notice a lot of people smell wine, they'll smell uh, scotch, or they'll smell, they, they wanna smell that spirit first. So we'll do that. Then the other thing that I do, my drink of choice, I wanna make sure my palate is clean. Um, dark chocolate, chocolate covered cashews, chocolate covered almonds, dark chocolate covers, any of the dark chocolates will clean it off. Particularly if you've had dinner, and in your dinner, it included tomato. Tomato sauce, pasta, um, pizza, salsa, right? Right. The acidity of the tomato doesn't leave your palate. And when you smoke it, it's bitter. No different than if you, you could eat a jalapeno and it's fine. Drink hot coffee, it lights up. Right. So in this case, um, I want to cleanse my palate. My drink of choice is Diet Dr. Pepper. And the reason for that is that tobacco, cola, or like cocoa, coffee, all ignite the same parts of your palate. So a lot of times what will happen is the cola in a Dr. Pepper will kind of offset the cola or the cocoa uh, flavors that you get in this, and it scoots everything out of the way so the background notes come forward. Really aged tobacco actually has, takes on a dried fruit smell. So like when I've smelled really old tobacco, when you smell it, it smells like a box of raisins that you just opened, which is a dried fruit. So with this, Diet Dr. Pepper actually has cherry in there. It's basically cola with cherry in it. But it leaves that cherry on your palate, that sugar on your palate sits there, so then when the heat lights it up, it's really, really good. So I'm gonna go ahead, just kind of clean my palate a little bit. And I was unprepared, not even bring anything, so. Well, you could drink out of the other side of my cup. I don't have COVID. Neither do I. That's the anti-COVID side. Ah, so now I'm going to um, light the scar. We're just going to kind of toast the foot. And all toasting the foot is, is just getting the cigar. So we've warmed up that foot. We want it to burn even. You don't want to hammer it with flame. And then, Right off the light, I'm getting just a really intense cedar. And when you're taking puffs, don't be afraid to taste the smoke. It's a great like Dave point. Doing there. Yeah, it when you actually like chew, when you chew on the smoke. Your palate tells your brain you're eating, and it, it becomes hyper aware of what's happening on your palate. Well, I'll tell you one thing I don't get out of this. I get no pepper out of this. No pepper. Very smooth, a little bit of cream. Cream, I'm getting a beautiful cedar note. Absolutely. Really, really evident. Um, after it dissipates, after it goes away, and a lot of it is the heat of the cigar. But once that dissipates, I've got a couple of spots on the back of my palate that are still alive, still active. The front 
because the smoke is hitting the front of your palate, you typically feel it before you taste it. Um, one way to get around that is to do what's called a cold draw. And what that means is if you take a cigar, and this is a great way for you guys to do this, take a cigar and just take a pull, 70, 80% pull, and let it hit the front of your palate. Just concentrate on the impact that that's making to your palate. Feel that, I mean, you feel a lot of tingle, right? Because that's the heat. Right. So what you're, so right now we haven't tasted anything yet. We've only felt it, okay? Now here's an, an alternative. You basically hold it up, up and down like this. The, the temperature of that heat, of that smoke is about half. So now you instantly, your whole mouth is full of, of smoke that has great flavor. R real um, buttery note. Now I'll, I'll ask you, because I mean, I see it in, I see it in color, but what, if, you're, if you're looking at a color spectrum, what are, what's kind of the color spectrum that you're getting out of this? I'm getting a warm orange, very smooth, creamy flavor and just a tad of floral. Yep. And so you'll, other, you'll hear cigars that are described as citrusy and you'll hear cigars that are described as floral. A lot of times it's really one and the same. I may say I like this because it's citrusy and somebody's going, no, I'm getting all floral. It's just a different way of describing a, a similar impact to your palate. Well, you know, and, and uh, part of the deal that I, I always uh, mention as far as Tales from the Lounge, I don't ever want to do a cigar review and you know rate it with the number system or th anything like that for the simple fact that everybody's taste is different and Dave agrees you know uh, you smoke what you like but you know uh, uh, everybody tastes something different and some people will taste things that you don't and vice versa so uh, that's that's another thing you want to be mindful of when you're smoking is taste what you can taste and taste what you like and smoke what you like and then if you can learn something about that same stick from somebody else who likes it mm -hmm. and identify some of those flavors you're much, that much better off and another thing that you mentioned when you do that uh, up and down draw what do you call that cool draw a cool draw and you've explained that the smoke hits the top of the roof of your mouth and gets cooled off by the time that it circles back around and that way, that smoke isn't burning the tongue uh, right off the get-go. It's getting cooled down by the roof of your mouth. It, I'm telling you, there's, there's very few things that you can do in the world of smoking cigars that, that you instantly identify a night and day difference. And that cold draw is one of those things. Just try it. And, you know, we all spend good money on cigars. So, just an understanding that nearly 300 hands have touched this cigar in order to get it from the seed I'm to the sure show. I'm not sure you say that in the days of COVID and 300 people touching your stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> once it gets to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> trust me, nothing survives that. But uh, yeah, yeah, now it's, it, but it, 300 hands come in contact with the cigar. It is a true art form when you see a, a really good roller executing what a really good uh, blender has put together for a cigar. Um, construction of the cigar is is perfect. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not getting hot, it's not getting soft. Um, and that's another it's thing. It's holding its construction so well, the draw is spectacular. The, that was another thing I noticed. This has got a very firm uh, uh, feel to it, uh, but the draw is just perfect on it. It's not too tight. Uh, you know that that's one of the things that I noticed when uh, I went to Cuba. Almost everything that I smoked in Cuba was rolled way too tight. Way too tight. And you you cut a V cut in a cigar and go to pull, uh, pull a draw on it. You couldn't you know, hardly get any air through it. You couldn't get yeah. any smoke out of it. Yeah, actually, ironically, I I, I went to Cuba uh, to the Habanos Festival, which is the Habanos is the cartel that runs all the Cuban cigars and. Um, the vice president of Abanos was telling me that uh, 
that they understand in Cuba that five cigars on average, five cigars in a box of 25, will not be smokable because it was rolled so tight and so poorly. And I, I said to him that if you ever come to the United Sta States and sell cigars in the United States, you gotta change that attitude. Oh, absolutely. Because Americans wanna buy 25 cigars and they want all 25 to work. And I can uh, see one. And, but but after that, I mean that's and, and most most of our manufacturers that sell product primarily in the States, they take great pride in the fact that they are that they are making a good quality cigar. This particular cigar, I can tell you, it is their number one priority is making sure that it's rolled perfectly. But this cigar is not oily. It's super clean on your palate. After after the flavors dissipated, your mouth doesn't taste like an ashtray. Super, super clean. Super clean. Little bit, just like on that, I just got a little hint of black pepper at the end. Are you getting that on the back of your on the back of your throat? Yep. Yep. But just a very light hint. Right. So and we talked about both smoke cigars that you know the first the first few draws and you're just got a mouthful almost full of pepper. So one of the things that Ron talked about we mentioned as we we're getting ready to get started is the retro hail. So what a retro hail is, is you take in a pull of smoke and I like to pull in about 60%. I like to have a tendency to, to do a cool pull on that, a cool draw, so that it's not too hot when I exit, when it exits out my nose. But I'll basically extinguish about 80 to 90% of the smoke out of my mouth and then just push that last 10% through my nose and then pull back in. Oh man, that was so floral. Yeah. So floral, I mean like potpourri floral. At the very end of that, that last little drop, man, that's and I, good. And you know, and this cigar, and, and I don't say this very often, but this one, you could probably do a complete 100 retro hail and never bother you. And we joked earlier about, you know, some of the cigars, you retro hail, and you better have a good nasal cavity because it'll burn it off uh, and eat it up. This one, you could do a complete 100% retro hail and never feel it. Mm. Just wonderful. So if you like a, so like in this case, I would rate this cigar pretty much right out of five in, oh, my, yeah, in my world. Uh, um, and, and again, it's, it varies. I mean, some of you guys could smoke this and go, Man, I smoke stuff a lot stronger than that. This is a three, and some people will be like, I can't believe you can smoke this. Right. It's At some point, you just have to kind of set a post in the ground that that's where you're going to base everything off of. But this is exceptional. You'll notice that it's it's not burning very fast. That's a good indicator of the quality of the tobacco. Um, this particular cigar uses a double binder, and uh, so it's gonna, the combustion rate's gonna be very slow. So if you're gonna smoke a cigar on a golf course or you're gonna be outside where it's windy, this will put up a better fight against mother nature than, than some cigars. Um, but this, the, the performance of the cigar is really good. So what are some of the other notes and some of the other things that you're getting? Cause we're about at the same point in the cigar. Oh, yeah. So once I get, a cigar will change dramatically once you get about an inch in and there's a distinct first third, second third, third third uh, flavor profile. And you're really looking for a cigar that's got complexity. Complexity means it's not the same cigar every single puff. You're gonna get variance. But what you're looking for is good coverage on your palate so that all of it gets ignited versus maybe a hot spot in the center or a lot of, typically pepper is picked up on the sides of your palate. Um, and if it's very subtle, like white pepper, it'll kind of rest on the very back of your throat. Remember, we're not inhaling the cigar itself. Um, that's just as, it basically is a no-no. Well, you know, and that's a funny story. I, I'm sure, just like a lot of people out there, you've had cigars for special events, you know, a wedding or a birth or something like that, and you smoke a cigar, and you only do it every blue moon, and you only do it every blue moon because you get sick every time. What I didn't realize was 
you don't inhale a cigar like you do a cigarette. You only pull the, the smoke into your mouth and you get the flavor and then expel it. Right. And I was getting sick every time I tried one because I was trying to inhale it and I would turn green. Right. Now the reason for that is because one cigar has about the same nicotine content as a pack of cigarettes. Uh, obviously this is pure organic high quality tobacco and cigarettes are chopped up basically chopped up trash with a bunch of chemicals in it but nicotine wise this particular cigar uh, has as much nicotine in it as a, as a pack of cigarettes nicotine from natural tobacco takes on the same characteristics and same impact as a, a blast of caffeine so when people feel like they turn green, they get nauseous, they get dizzy, it's the same, it's the same thing as going on a roller coaster. Right. You know, you get that jolt of adrenaline and it kind of gets you lightheaded and, and makes you a little bit woozy. If you're inhaling, you're just taking a blast of nicotine. Nicotine has this caffeine effect and you just get this buzz. And that buzz is enough to throw your equilibrium off and that's what kind of causes that, that dizziness. But uh, yeah, I've seen some guys that they say like Cubans make them turn green. Well, they're they're smooth enough that they inhale them, right? And uh, they kind of learn the hard way. But no, this cigar I'm getting. I, uh, and now I'm getting a little more pepper. And what is that else I'm tasting? I still got the cedar, a little bit of floral. But I'm definitely getting pepper. I'm getting a little bit on the front, a little bit on the side. Um, as the cigar is heating up, you're going to get a little bit more oil delivery. A lot of tobacco has a lot of oil in it, and they'll, they'll use, depending on who the company is, they'll use either a lot of that particular filler. Uh, some wrapper has a lot of oil. Um, one, of the, one of the basic rule of thumbs, and one of the reasons that we did the blind man's draw, is we have a spectrum uh, again, cigars one to ten. We have cigars in that pack that are a three, and we have cigars in there that are an eight. Some people think that because they're new to cigars, I gotta smoke mild. Right. So usually the first question we ask is, do you drink coffee? If they drink black coffee, I don't care if they're new to cigars, their palate is conditioned to take that strength. So smoke something stronger to satisfy your palate. But the nice thing about this, is when we're ultimately done and you smoke all five cigars or six cigars and you do the review then you come back in and we tell you what the cigars were but you rank them you rank the five cigars in the order that you liked them the best and where that kind of, where that turns out to be kind of a cool deal is you may find out that you can smoke a cigar that's much stronger than what you thought but we we see it every day i'm new to cigars so get me something mild or worse yet, I'm new to cigars, get me something that's infused with sugar. Oh God. And that's that's not smoking a cigar. No. That's that's just not smoking a cigar. So, I mean, there look, there's a lot of them sold, and I'm not saying anything negative about it, other than it is, not my it cup is of tea. it's not my cup of tea either. So mm. now the one little cat I'll leave out of the bag is every time I've had this cigar in a blind man's draw and we went through with everybody that's done it and reviewed their favorites, this cigar has been their favorite every time. I'm not shocked. Every this time. This is an awesome stick. I'll be anxious to find out what it is at the end. And another thing, if you're fairly new uh, to cigars uh, and you really are enjoying it and you want to learn more, I recommend getting a cigar journal. Mm -hmm. Get a journal, start writing down, you know, what the cigar is, uh, uh, what, you're, what you're tasting, how it burned, how it felt, what it looked like, what the smell from the foot was, right. and, and the notes that you picked up right off the bat. And keep that journal, and then as you start finding different things, go, you know what, well, I really like this and this one, I wonder, this one that supposedly has the same pl flavor profile, I'll probably like that. Let me try that. And that's the other thing too is it, we sell cigar journals here, and you can you can tape the label inside and, and make some notes. And 
and, and it kind of, again, guides you through the, it's asking you the questions you should think about when you're smoking a cigar so you can answer them. Um, but a cigar journal is a great way to do it. The other thing that happens with cigars though is your, is your palate will mature. So when you smoke cigars for a year or two years, I've done this just recently, I went back and smoked a cigar that I thought was it when I first started. I thought, you know, you're smoking that, I'm smoking this, I'm up here. It, that cigar does nothing. When you, when you get an opportunity to taste some really good, um, what I would call, a, I hate to call it a boutique cigar, but uh, typically boutique cigars are really referenced by low production count, very, very high quality tobacco. Um, so that's typically a boutique. Our shop, uh, Industrial Cigars, if, there, if we were a liquor store, our liquor store would only sell craft beer. We, would, we wouldn't be able to get a Bud Light here. And <laughs> there's 60 other shops in Dallas, they all sell Bud Light. That's right. So, um, and, and the other thing too is don't be afraid to uh, really see, because a lot of times people smoke a cigar and it tastes like a cigar. And then they smoke another cigar and it tastes like a cigar. Because there's a taste. But they are dramatically different. So when you don't have anything to do, you're sitting on the back porch, COVID's got the whole place shut down, smoke two cigars at the same time and actually experiment going back and forth, back and forth. So you can really taste the difference and notice that. And you can really, your, your, your knowledge and your ability to evaluate a cigar jumps when you can really taste the difference. Because you may smoke this, and if we had another cigar, uh, let's say, the, uh, Casa Turin, the blue label Casa Turin. Right. <clears throat> very, very peppery. Well, you could smoke both those cigar cigars at the same time. There will be no no question in your mind which one has got pepper. Right. But some people, if their palate's not that mature, it's it's just like, I mean, I don't drink, but I, I drank 35 years ago. And, and we and don't hold it against you. That's right. That's right. I drive a lot better than I did back then. <laughs> but bourbon tastes like bourbon tastes like bourbon. But now I can just smell it and I can smell caramel and I can smell all these things. So it's, it's really an incredible, uh, a really an incredible system. You got a question coming in? What's By the way, if you, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them while we're sitting here smoking this freaking amazing cigar. Uh, one of the things that comes up a lot, like the cigars that are in here, as I mentioned, it's about 70, typically 70 to $80 worth of cigars in five or six cigars. So that's kind of in that 10 to $12 range. Do you need to spend $50 on a cigar to have a great cigar? No. Um, we have some cigars that are $6 that frankly are the reason we don't sell a lot of the big name brand cigars that are $12 because the $6 cigar tastes better than the $12 cigar. And, and so the, the question is why? Well, when we talk about being blinded by the label, when there are name brands that you see in magazines, um, you, you know, they have huge sales forces. They, you don't see this, but they have huge trade show booths. That all equals overhead. And all that overhead is going into the cost of the cigar. With a lot of the craft cigars that we have, when you're smoking an $8 cigar, you're getting $8 worth of cigar. Whereas some cigars are good $8 cigars, they just happen to cost $16. Right. Because you have all that overhead on it. Or they're so when $8 you, cigars and they got $4. That's, that's, that's where you're that's really where you're noticing. Getting, yeah. That's, I, if I have a, this $8 cigar and another $8 cigar, you'll see a huge difference because this is really about a four dollar cigar um we've but, got oni oni dot underscore otf on you got any questions hit us up this is uh it's still you'll see you're burning a little I'm, bit faster I'm burning faster no you'll I'm notice the hell out of it <laughs> uh, the ash let the ash fall off when it wants to uh people are afraid they're going to get it on their clothes in the 15, 1600s, they used cigar tobacco ash as a cleaning element. They used it, they would rub it into their um, the rugs, they would pound that out. They actually used it to brush their teeth. It is very clean. And actually, I'll show you something that's kind of interesting because you already have it. If you take that ash 
a lot of the characteristics that are in that cigar actually sits in that ash. There's uh, Patora, which is one of the finest cigar lines in the, in the world. They're from Switzerland. The Patora Lounge actually has a two-star Michelin chef on staff that just cooks for their members. But their steak, their claim to fame with their steak is they put uh, Patoro tobacco ash on top of the cigar, or on top of the steak, yeah. <clears throat> so you get a lot of those same characteristics that were in that tobacco. You're not gonna get the oil, but you can get that by just tasting the ash. Again, performance is spectacular. So I'm gonna take a draw now because I've been, I've just been smoking it. We're having a conversation. Right. So this time I'm going to take a draw, really concentrate on it. Typically I close my eyes um, when I do that, and I really want to concentrate on what I'm, what flavor profiles I'm getting. So there I picked up a really distinct, I mean, I again, I see things like whether I see color or I'll see an experience that I had, but I got a very distinct hay, a very, a, which is very clean, dry, mellow, but it, it just, it reminded, a friend of mine had a, a huge horse stable and I smelled that, not the, not, there's there's cigars that'll be described as earthy and that earthy would be more like the you know if it was like damp hay right you know where you really you're really smelling just uh that the hay itself versus that experience of just kind of walking through it and it's just that real light aromatic element the cedar has kind of gone away in this cigar i still get the i'm still getting the floral but the citrus is more of an effect on my palate than it is a flavor. Right. Um, effect, imagine biting into an orange or a lemon without the orange or lemon flavor, just the acidity that you get with that cigar. So in this case, we would really be wiped out had we had like tomato or something like that because the acidity of that, and this has some acidity in it that would not have paired well at all. Let's do a little. Let's just take a minute, be quiet. That's compelling. I just said a minute, we wouldn't do more than that. <laughs> oh. I, I keep saying the word clean, but the finish of this cigar is so clean. You're not gonna wake up tomorrow and your mouth's gonna taste like an ashtray with this. Definitely not. And that is that is that is purely the age of this tobacco, and the, and the little bit of cream that I was getting earlier is gone. Yeah, and I'm getting more of the uh, the uh, the acidity and the uh, the, uh, the the earthy tone, the hay, uh, not the earthy tone, the 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 hay, and just a and just a little bit of pepper, but not a lot. No, that time I got actually pepper up on the roof of my mouth, from the very back and the very roof of my mouth, which is good. I mean, I like a cigar that every puff is different. You know, and that's, you know, there are cigars called One Note Wonders that, that it's the same cigar from the beginning to the end. I said Macanudo earlier. It's the same damn cigar from the beginning to end. Doesn't do a lot. Now, there are some Macanudos like the Vintage 97, um, some of those that has older tobacco, darker tobacco. It's definitely richer. Um, but like if I see this, I mean, I still kind of see it in that orange, kind of orange color spectrum, orange and yellow. But if I'm getting a cocoa note, it's actually more milk chocolate than it would be uh, dark chocolate, you know, espresso bean, uh, dark, dark coffee. It would be more like coffee with cream in it, you know, just that to take that edge off of it. Not an ounce of bitterness in this at all. None. So if you're out there watching and you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. 
One of the things that I am excited about is uh, Industrial Cigars is launching uh, Cigar Newbies, which is a, uh, a Facebook group. And what I've, what I've noticed on a lot of groups, because a lot of guys join the, the cigar groups and they're really, they, a, lot of question, a lot of their comments start with, I'm a newbie, but what should I do? How should I do? And stuff like that. And inevitably, because of the size of the group and because social media is so friendly, that people will just pounce on you out of the weeds and make you feel like an idiot for even asking the questions. Well, and that was another reason why I asked you to do this is because, you know, this is a perfect little newbie uh, exercise. Uh, you get with somebody who's uh, uh, willing to educate uh, and, and walk you through the process. Uh, uh, like I said, I, and I've only been smoking cigars for, I guess, three, maybe four years. And uh, I still don't know anything. I'm still learning stuff. Uh, but you have the passion to learn. You've gone to Cuba. You've you've uh, you you have this desire to expand in the hobby. Our shop is just a hobby gone wild. Me and my three sons love cigars. We don't come from this industry. We just love cigars. So, um, but early on, I had people that explained to me. I wanted to learn as well, so we went to Nicaragua and we spent nine days there and, and learned everything from the seed to the shelf. What are all the steps? We just wanted to learn that. But our shop is really full of, of people that maybe they didn't start as a hobbyist, but now it is a, an important part of their life, an important part, an important hobby. And the more you know about any hobby, the more enjoyable it is um, versus just going through the, the exercise. And um, so Cigar Newbies is not a necessarily a website or not a necessarily a Facebook page that is going to have um, where you're relying on other group members to answer your question. We want you to post a question and then us, this is our day job, we'll answer your question. So we're not going to answer your question to sell your product. We're not going to answer your question to talk you into doing something. We're just going to answer your question because we probably had that question before. And um, we're going to fill it with our ICC universities, which is where we've interviewed some of the industry icons to be able to listen to them. And what was their passion? So much of what we do with, with manufacturers is, I want to know who, who created this. And I want to know, did they do it for the money? Or are they doing it because they just want to deliver the best cigar that you can possibly get? We had a guy come in here when we first opened, and, it's, and I said, so what drives you? And he goes, well, you know, I made a lot of money selling helicopters and I just figured I could get in this and make a lot of money. It's the wrong way to go about it. Exactly. This is, this is not an, a, a place where you're going to make a lot of money. It's just something where you're going to have this really enjoyable experience. It's calming. It's uh, the cigar, as you've mentioned, and I've mentioned a hundred times, is the great equalizer. It doesn't matter what anybody does. We're just having a cigar. That's right. And, and there's nothing easier than than firing up a conversation that's what are you smoking and and just have this conversation but um, you know as you get into the hobby and you have questions and you want to learn some more that's where I think cigar newbies is going to be fun and then if you ever want to watch just a bunch of idiots on Saturday you can watch us on Saturday at the shop on uh, industrial cigars on Facebook that you will not get any smarter no. watching that show but you um, will laugh your ass off. But you, you, that, that show is uh, me and my son, and uh, it's a full contact sport. It is we, a full we hit each other a it lot. It is full contact cigar smoking. It is. It is definitely oh. a black belt in cigar smoke. But you so there, drink from the lake, drink from the non-COVID side. But and that sugar just cleans your palate. But this cigar, the, the temperature of the smoke is very good. You get a full mouth of smoke. Uh, it's just, it's so pleasant. It's just, it's just outstanding. Well, you know, and, and you were mentioning it earlier, it, this is a great way to relax. And if you can find a decent lounge with some people who know what they're doing, uh, and, a, and you will almost always find a group of guys who love cigars and are passionate about it and the cigar culture in general has just been amazing to me about how everybody comes together 
has a good time, relaxes, and there's no pretensions, there's no uh, expectations. You come in and you're having a cigar, you may be working a, uh, a day job making minimum wage, and you're sitting across from a multimillionaire, and you guys are talking about the Cowboys or uh, whatever. Right. And it doesn't you matter. You find something in the internet. You find yeah. something in common, and you just have right. a, uh, uh, and you build relationships. Right. The guys, that, the guys that really, the pretentious guys in a cigar lounge, they get weeded out pretty quick. Pretty quick. Guys, you know, guys can read that. Guys and gals. I mean, we have huge oh, yeah. percentage of our of our regulars are female, and a, a big part of that is because of the air purification in our system. We scrub 100 percent of the air every six minutes, so you just don't smell like a cigar when you leave, and, and women really appreciate that a lot. We get a lot of couples up here too. Oh yeah, absolutely. But if you're near the Frisco, Texas area, you need to come check out Industrial Cigar. They've got a great place here, a good selection of cigars. And if you don't know what you want to smoke, just say, Dave, what am I smoking? That, and that, and that is, he does that every Saturday morning. <laughs> Um, what am I smoking? Every Saturday morning. Not every Saturday. Saturday every Saturday. I can set my watch by it. 9.53. We're writing the script for the show. Because that we spent up to two minutes writing the script. That's right. And, um, but you, at our place, you will always be followed into the humidor. And we're always going to have somebody there to help you. It's me and my three sons. We have a couple other staff members that are so good. And that's what I, I was just about to comment that about that. Everybody you've ever employed here has always been passionate about cigars and been knowledgeable and have been a lot of help when you when you had questions. Yes. Uh, uh, and another nice thing about the, the, that I like about the place is it's a super clean place. You come in and the ashtrays aren't full. Uh, there's not trash all over the place. Uh, and you mentioned the air purifiers. You come in and the place isn't you know uh, three feet deep in smoke. No. You're not and, sitting in your in, a, in your own cloud of smoke. So, that's so for sure. uh, uh, everything is uh, top notch, and come in and buy a stick. You can sit down. It doesn't cost you anything. No, I mean BYOB. BYOB. And then they have mentioned on a couple of occasions they've thought about you know maybe expanding and getting a bar. And I keep going, don't do that. That's less money I can buy on cigars. <laughs> I'd have to buy liquor. You know. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, people find out real quick. They go to some of these places that have a, a bar and you can smoke cigars in it and they pay $22 for a Blanton's pour when you can buy the whole bottle for 50 yeah. or 60 And, you know, some of these guys find out real quick, I'd, I'd rather buy this whole bottle for 40 and then go in and spend some more money on cigars instead of having two drinks. But, Absolutely. Um, we have glasses and ice and everything else for you. I, I just, I mean, we're talking about the shop and some other stuff while we're just in the midst of a, of a really special cigar. This cigar is in the kind of 10 to $12 range. Uh, if this had a name brand on it, call it Fuente, Rocky Patel, any of those. <clears throat> I don't think it'd be I would say, I'm not even 100% sure that they have anything that can touch this. Um, I, I don't care what the price is. Uh, Opus X from, from Fuente is very good. They're $33. Uh, Padron makes a very good cigar. Uh, and we can talk a little bit while we're smoking the cigar. There, there are some different or countries of origin where tobacco is primarily grown. Mexico is very popular in the Mexican San Andreas region. Uh, very popular. Um, Nicaragua, if you want a heavier, oilier cigar, they are typically much more oily. Uh, the Dominican has a tendency to be a little bit lighter, but a little bit more pepper. And Honduras is a little bit lighter than Nicaraguan, and typically the tobacco is a little sweeter. You'll also get tobacco from, uh, in this case, uh, they'll take seeds from one area of the world and grow them in another. Um, this one is Ecuadorian Habano, so it was a particular type of seed called a Habano, grown in Ecuador. The soil has a huge impact on the way cigars are uh, the, the end result of the tobacco. So a Cuban cigar, for example, typically very light wrapper, but it, that's the soil and the pH level that's in the soil in Cuba that creates a very unique mix. You could take a, we in fact, there's a cigar that we have here called the Foundation CT142. 
phenomenal cigar, by the way. But they took a seed from Havana and grew it in Connecticut. That's, that cigar is darker than this, very oily, and that, that wrapper took 36 months to age to get that, wow. that um, ammonia out of that cigar. But once it came out the other side of that 36 months, it's really special. So um, there's tobacco grown. We have a new cigar in that's, that has a Cameroon wrapper. Cameroon is in, is in Africa. But the cigar, unfortunately, because the way they grow tobacco, down, literally just throw the seeds in the dirt and see what happens. It's not very consistent. It's very difficult to get consistency in the leaves and to get any kind of volume. So uh, uh, a company called JRE, which is a, a, probably the best farmer in Honduras, has worked for uh, 12 years to grow a Cameroon wrapper in a really good environment where they can get a good yield, but still replicate that original African Cameroon. Uh, Sumatra, from the island of Sumatra, uh, very citrusy, very sweet, very vibrant and bright. Um, you know, there's uh, the Mexican San Andreas wrapper, very dark, very almost like sandpaper, but still has this beautiful sweetness. Um, you know, it, it, you know that's another thing which I, I mentioned: vibrant, bright. If a cigar has a real bright flavor versus a real dark, heavy flavor, this one is kind of kind of medium, right? Kind of, it's not super bright, um, but there are also two types of tobacco. One tobacco that will actually dry your palate out, uh, cigars like Fratello, dries your palate out. Nothing wrong with that, it just, that's what it does. And then there are cigars that actually activate your, your saliva, this being one of those. Uh, not a lot of drool coming outside of my mouth, but... Um, <laughs> I just this, like to drool. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. but... Um, but creating that, that saliva. Now, that's actually good because the saliva is on your palate and it, and it kind of puts a coating on it that will take away some of the impact. So it softens the flavor of the cigar and, and just, again, lets you taste the cigar for what it is. So this is a, this is a phenomenal cigar. Um, I, I frankly have, this is one of those that I have to remind myself, go back and smoke cigars you knew were good. I haven't smoked this cigar in a long time. And it is, this should be in my daily rotation. Now, I'm going to jump on you, mm -hmm. subject-wise, because you mentioned something about going back and smoking something you hadn't smoked in a long time. You got a spot, special box in recently. Yes. Tell me about that. So, um, there was a cigar. We went to Nicaragua in 2014. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that one. Which one are you talking about? The one that the uh, you got today. Oh well, we received about oh ten different ones. But oh. actually, if you go on our uh, YouTube page, yes. Industrial Cigars, or you go on to our website, IndustrialCigars.com, there is a video that's called Busted, and Busted is uh, my son Brandon has a, a video production company. So what he did is he had us all just sit down and talk into the camera of our story in our own words. And then he spliced it all together so each one of us were telling the story. Because ironically, the story's the same. But what's interesting is the kids, as they were telling the story, um, they realized they're adults and I can't ground them anymore. But <laughs> they kind of let out that, oh, Oh, you were smoking cigars when you were 16? Um, and I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that their brother was uh, out buying them cigars. Um, so, uh, but if you watch Busted, there is a cigar that they, they talk about um, as just kind of this afterthought that my brother, my older brother, used to buy us these cigars. And my first cigar was the Playboy, which is a Hugh Hefner um, series. The Playboy by Don Diego, a cigar that was hasn't been around for easily for ten years. Um, they just don't exist. But I, I'm always on the search for vintage cigars, old cigars. We actually have cigars in our humidor that are over hundred years old. Um, but I found three boxes of Playboys by Don Diego, and it was the coolest thing today 
to be able to give my kids each a box of the first cigar that they ever had. So to them, it was a great cigar. Now they're going to smoke it and they're probably going to go, eh, there's not a lot going on here. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was cool to be able to give them uh, a box of the first so cigar I'm that curious, they had. I'm curious to hear what they say about uh, about those after they smoked them. Yeah, yeah, and we're we're gonna we're gonna do a Facebook Live. We're all gonna smoke it together, and then Brandon's gonna put a link to the original video busted. Uh, it's a little two minute video, and it's, it's it's pretty cool. But it was it was cool to be able to find those cigars, and part of that um, acquisition was I was able to buy a series of cigars that have been sit in a have been sitting in a perfectly humidified area. And I think the newest cigar that we have has been sitting in the box in their warehouse for nine years. And I'm telling you, nine year old cigars are special. And we actually have, there's a box of H. Upman's that we got in there that were received in the year 2000. So these cigars are 20 years old. And that's uh, not including the age that was already on. No, not including, yeah, I mean, the they, they aged it, they had to put, you know, go through that whole process. So that, that tobacco itself could be 23, 24 years old. So we have those cigars. The beauty is, is I got to pay the 2006 price. Um, one cigar that's a favorite of ours, we sent one of our employees to the factory in Mexico, is the Casa Torrent line. Um, they've been growing tobacco in Mexico since 1880. Phenomenal farmers. These guys know how to do it. Well, back in 2005, um, Alejandro Torrent, who is the owner of the company, came out with a line of cigars called A Torrent. Um, we now sell their cigars, they're called Casa Torrent, but they didn't start selling them again, selling cigars again until 2017. So they went a period of time where they were just growing tobacco and selling it to other companies. But the A Torrent in the 2005 Cigar Aficionado Top 25 finished 24. And this cigar, I've got these new in the box, and they're from 2005. So 15 years of age on a cigar that back then ranked in Cigar Aficionado's top 25 is gonna be a special cigar. And, I, and I'm, I'm excited, I'm gonna be able to open those boxes and, and you can buy one, you can buy 10, I, don't, I really don't care, but it, it gives you an opportunity to find out what age is all about. And it's, now out comes the butter and the cream and the sweetness and the smoothness that is, you know, you would think that's gone with age, but it's not. I mean, we've, we've smoked cigars, I smoked a cigar a couple of years, on New Year's, not this year, but last year, from 1880. And that cigar had punch, it had strength, it had body. You just wouldn't think that. No. But when they're when a cigar is kept perfectly well, uh, I have a cigar that was rolled the year World War One broke out. And to be able to sit there and think about where that cigar was at during the depression and how many where has it been? Yeah. And it's it's just crazy to think that today it's sitting in the humidor and and you can buy one and smoke it. it. It's it's a really cool experience. So to answer your to answer the question you haven't asked, tobacco doesn't get rotten and doesn't get old. You don't have to throw it out. No, it's, it's unless as, unless you don't keep it properly. You got to keep it humidified. Keep it at about between sixty five and seventy five percent humidity. Keep it at about seventy degrees. Keep it out of direct sunlight, and that cigar will last forever. Forever, literally forever. Yeah, I had that eighteen eighty. <coughs> Excuse me, that 1880 cigar as well, and I was blown away by how good a hundred plus year old cigar we, tastes. We had it. guys holding like the last leaf and trying to figure out a way to smoke it without that, burning their mouth. I mean, it was, I, I was so good. Uh, I was, and I was doing that. It was, it was crazy. And a shout out to Oliver uh, for that. Yep. Uh, great, great vendor, great guy, great rep. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's actually our rep for our finest line of cigars, which is called Atabay and Byron. Minimum of 14 years of age, undisclosed tobacco. Um, we do know that it uses some um, Ecuadorian Connecticut. We know that it uses Peruvian tobacco. Peruvian tobacco is very special. Tobacco actually was. People think the first tobacco was grown in Cuba. 
the, the tobacco seed actually originated in Peru uh, about 3,000 years ago. It was first grown in, in Cuba about 1,000 years ago. So they were growing tobacco in Peru. It's just a very difficult um, tobacco to, to uh, blend with because some blenders that don't know how to use Peruvian tobacco, it's, it's like a chef not knowing how to use a habanero pepper. Right. Some can do it perfect and it doesn't burn you to death and then some would just, they just, you know, steam coming out of your ears. So uh, in the hands of the right blenders, they can do some really special stuff. So, um, so this is the first cigar. Um, right now I'm just getting a really clean finish. Uh, we're kind of in that second, third, and and I'm much further down because he's doing most of the talking. Mm -hmm. As usual. Well, I'm more than happy to let you do it because you know, like I said, a lot more than I do. A lot of the citrus has gone away. Um, it's bringing just this real rich. It's almost like if you've ever had unsweetened dark chocolate without the sugar it has this kind of coating that sits on your palate rich it's actually I'm seeing the color spectrum starting to, to get a little bit darker I'm, you know I'm seeing light browns and brown you know starting to get towards the darker milk chocolate dark chocolate oh there's the bubble boy <laughs> He's so funny. He is. And if you're a Star Trek nerd, you can come in and talk to to uh, Tony. 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 Tony was in uh, Star Trek. Yep. He's a he was an actor. He's been in seven, huge, huge bio. I had no idea. But he was in TV show Twenty Four. He was in all kinds of stuff. And now he's here selling cigars, and he's happy, happy as hell. Again, he's got that passion. When he came in, I literally thought he had been selling cigars and in the cigar business for a decade. And he just has been avid about it. And he just, when he moved back to Texas from California, from Hollywood, he was just like, God, this is, I just want to get in the cigar business. And um, we're, we're just, we're blessed to have him. We, uh, Brandon Byers is one of our other employees, Purple Heart recipient, lost his leg in Afghanistan just loves cigars and his passion, his work ethic. Um, when you have military around here, you're talking about the shops clean. When you have people that are in the military around here, everything's clean. Yeah. All the time. So let's get to where, um, see now as the cigar's heating up, a little bit of oil, a little, it just sits a little bit heavier on your palate. Yeah. Not, not rude by any matter. Um, it, this would be what I would call a sessionable cigar, meaning I could smoke one right after the other, right after the other. It doesn't hammer your palate. You're not going to look for something milder. It's actually a great way to end the day, a great cigar to end the day because it's, 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 it's still so clean. I mean, there, for those of you that have smoked cigars that sit heavy and you wake up the next morning, and you still taste that cigar, odds are you had a cigar that was young and uh, it had a little bit of that ammonia in that cigar yeah. and it's gonna leave you kind of bitter. So, uh, so of the cigars, since this is, this is part of the blind man's draw and we left our label off, what are you thinking uh, this cigar is? Well, it's not a principle. No. Principles of Dominican made cigar. Fabulous, fabulous cigar. Now refresh my memory. You told me one time, and I had forgotten, but Nicaraguan ash is darker. Typically, uh, Nicaraguan ash is dark. Um, the uh, one way to tell if you're smoking authentic Cuban is the ash is always dark. Uh, Dominican tobacco, a lot of times the ash is just stark white. So, um, but being conscious of your of the ash. Now with this one, you can tell it's a multiple country of origin cigar because right. you actually see on the binder that wrapped around that, yeah. there is a, a distinct 
dark circle, right? The wrapper itself, it's lighter when it burns, then it's darker. So they're probably using, um, they probably use Nicaraguan binder in this cigar, but the filler is a little bit lighter. Right. Um, you'll also notice, you see the holes yep. in that cigar? So the way, a, when a cigar is rolled, they'll lay down the binder, the, the, the person that's actually bunching the cigar together, they'll lay down the binder, <clears throat> this is the way they do it in Cuba, unfortunately, is they'll take tobacco and they set it in there like they're, like they're hand filling up a tortilla. They fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, <coughs> excuse me, with different tobaccos as the way that the blender, the way that the blender wanted it. And then they'll take that and they'll roll it, they'll roll that into a bunch and they put it into a press. And then they put that press in a vise and it squeezes that cigar so that it will hold its shape. Once it holds its shape, it takes about two days to do that. Once it holds that shape, some will do it for a less period of time. They give it to a, typically a female and the female will then put the wrapper on it because they have a more delicate touch. Whenever you shake the hand of a person that is a buncher, their hand is like shaking hands with a vice. I mean, their, their hands are so strong. Um, but I mentioned that in the end of this ash, what you're actually seeing is little holes that are, that are around there. With this cigar, it's a very, uh, it takes a long time to do it this way, and typically the way they're rolled in Cuba, the way they used to roll them in Cuba. So they would lay out that binder, they would take a leaf and roll it and set it in there, and they would take another leaf and roll it and set it in there. So what they've done is they've created a series of straws with that tobacco. So that the tobacco, he, you notice that Ron mentioned early on that the cigar was still very firm, but the draw was really smooth. So with this, what you have is the, the holes represent the straws that were put together inside that cigar. Now a cigar in, like in, let's say in Nicaragua, those guys have to roll a cigar, <clears throat> typically one cigar per minute or faster. So they're, they're gonna typically roll three to 400 cigars a day. This particular cigar, they only allow their rollers to roll between 75 and 100 cigars a day. So they can take the time. And that rolling of those individual straws is very time consuming, but the net result is you kind of imagine a honeycomb. It's got strength, but you have a natural draw versus tobacco that's bunched together and it could close that straw and you end up getting a, a much tighter draw. So with this, you're getting this just perfect performance. And that's the unfortunate thing about cigars. They all look the same, but they're not the same in the way that they're constructed. You know, in theory, a car is, you know, four wheels, two doors, four doors, and some glass and a bunch of metal and off it goes. They're not all made the same. And, and one could say that about spirits. You could have a, a shot of Louis and a shot of something else and they're not the same. They're definitely not the same. So, um, this, this is one of those situations where it's, and, and our team here knows the difference of which ones are rolled better and which ones aren't. Um, and we can help guide you to, through some of those things. And sometimes just get a regular bunched cigar and then try something like this so you can see what we're talking about and the difference. There are some people that'll pick up some of these cigars and they'll squeeze it and it's so firm that they think they won't be able to get a draw out of it. But the fact is when it's rolled correctly, the performance is perfect. Well, I got a stupid question. Have I had this one before? I believe so. Okay. I believe so. You got me stumped. You'll be, uh, I don't think you'll be surprised because of how good this cigar is. I know. So this cigar, are you ready? Yeah. We we need a drummer in here so we can have a drummer. Uh, <laughs> but this cigar is the Bandolero. Really? Yes. So the Bandolero, we, I mentioned the Atabe and the Byron are the finest cigars that we have. Um, they're in the $25 to $35 per cigar um, price point. I will put that cigar against any cigar in the world. I don't care what the price is. And uh, based on the amount that we sell, there's a lot of people that have uh, at one point liked Davidoff cigars or Opus X cigars or 
some of the other cigars, Padron, that are that are a more expensive cigar, and then they smoke a, a Byron and Atabay and find out what good really tastes like. Bandolero is the entry level wine for that. So where an Atabay or Byron ages their tobacco for for a minimum of ten years, rolls it and then lets it sit post roll for another four years, this is actually going to be anywhere from four to five year old tobacco and then post roll will be one or two years. So um, the amount of time that they have to babysit that cigar directly correlates with the what the cost is. But if you had it, if if Davidoff made a cigar as good as it, they, now they make a hundred dollar cigar called the Royale. They make a cigar that's five hundred dollars. I would still buy the thirty five dollar Atabay. But uh, if an Atabay had a Davidoff label on it, no one would be able to afford it. I mean, it would right. be outrageously expensive. Well, you know, and that's the deal. They have to sit on that tobacco for so long, and you're sitting, and basically you're just sitting on money. It's a stack and, of money, and 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 that is the major difference in a lot of the companies is some of them will take the time and they have the passion and they want to make the best quality and make the best cigar they can, and so they basically sit on that money until the tobacco is right, mm -hmm. uh, and then they can produce what they want. While others are just going out and stuff as quickly as they can until it's just, you know, uh, barely able to be rolled and, and uh, uh, not kill you with the ammonia, uh, and others take the, the time to do a quality product. Yeah. And you threw me off with the ring gauge because I usually like the bandolero a little bigger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is a little smaller ring gauge. Uh, there's a very popular cigar called the Liga T52. Yep. Uh, people know the Liga 9 or they know the Liga T52 that was done <clears throat> by Drew Estates. Drew Estates also a company that makes acid. Um, they, uh, the, the original blender of that cigar was a gentleman named Nick Malilo and Nick has gone out and started Tabernacle or Foundation. So he's taken that skill set and his blending prowess to his own company and, and his that cigar does very, very well. Um, but we did a blind taste testing where we had one number, number one and number two, and we had 42 guys out front and we all smoked one and two, one and two, one and two at the same time. 40 out of 42 people. Now a T52 is about $18, $19. Um, this is about $11. Uh, 40 out of 42 guys chose the chose cigar it. over the T52. And the T52 was good, but what they said was, I could smoke this T52 once, but I could smoke this Bandolero all day all long. All day long. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a wonderful cigar. Um, and this is kind of how we do the, the blind man's draw. So uh, Cigar Newbies will be doing blind man draws uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, Nate and Tony okay. um, will be doing uh, a, a kind of a two-man uh, smoking the same cigar, but smoking them, and we'll be doing some live, uh, some live blind man straw tests. And at the end, we'll surprise you with what it is. And if you get a chance, grab a blind man straw. You can order these online uh, through the uh, industrialcigar.co. Uh, that's their uh, uh, e-web commerce site. I want to compliment you on that, by the way. Uh, when this whole COVID thing, they did not have a uh, commercial uh, website up. They had just a regular, you know, visitors website. They did not have an e-commerce site. And as soon as they got wind that they were going to have to shut down because of COVID, these guys threw up an e-web commerce site in two days. Yeah, and it doesn't look product like it. available, and it does not look like something that was thrown up in two days. Uh, another cool thing that they did: if you live within the uh, twenty-mile radius of uh, the shop. They will do delivery. You can order online and they'll bring it to you or they'll ship wherever you want. Right. Uh, they will do anywhere. Uh, and they change these up monthly. Uh, and one of the interesting things that you mentioned about the Blind Man's Draw was almost every time that somebody does the review and comes back with the total re uh, final results, they have picked a cigar that they had never even smoked before right. and been passing up in the humidor for who knows how long, and just did not even realize the quality and the and the and the and the uh, taste right. that they that they had. Yeah, and in every case, the the cigar that finished first and second 
no one had, they had never smoked it. They didn't know it was there. They didn't know anything about it. But again, the beauty of not having a label on it, you get to smoke the cigar for the cigar. And the beauty of the Blind Man's Draw website is it walks you through, it gets you thinking, how is the burn? You know, do I have a nice even burn or is it running or whatever the case may be. It guides you through that process so that you can enter your information in. Uh, the nice thing is, is we actually share that information with the manufacturers. So um, we had one manufacturer that had a cigar that was in the pack, didn't fare so well. And we, we gave them the fair, honest uh, results of the review and they actually ended up discontinuing that cigar. So, um, you know, we're, you know, like, like we said, we can't, we can't make you like a cigar. I, no. You know, if your favorite color is purple, I can't tell you it's blue. So you may smoke a cigar and you may find out that th this doesn't quite work for me. That's okay. They're not all going to work. Um, what we've done is when a manufacturer comes in and sells us or tries to sell us cigars, me and my three sons test every cigar. And if it's, and if it's worthy of a spot on the floor, good value, good performance, good flavor, we put it on the floor. So our stuff has all been pretty much hand picked um, where most shops are too busy trying to fill a humidor. So they just fill it with everything that they can get. So there are cigars within lines that are really good. And then there's some within those same lines that are, in our opinion, not so good. And uh, uh, so far, so far it seems to work because um, our top five lines are lines that most people have never heard of, but we sell a ton of them because they've opened their eyes and, and got out of the rut. The worst thing you can have is a guy that comes in and goes, nope, I want a fill in the blank and this is what I've always smoked and I've never smoked anything else. They're really missing the boat. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you very, very much, Dave. This has been educational and wonderful. I, I enjoy spending time with you as always. Uh, uh, and don't forget to catch us tomorrow night. Chris and I will be on doing our cigar company spotlight, mm. and we're doing principal tomorrow. Oh, excellent! And so there's a lot of David Trophy uh, uh, history and story to tell there, uh, and principal cigar, uh, another one of the great uh, 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 products that you can uh, uh, get. Not everywhere. But no. you can definitely get it here. Very, very limited. Um, and his role, uh, Darren's role with uh, working with Henry Kellner Jr. Henry Kellner Sr. is the master blender for Davidoff. <clears throat> Junior is not a kid, but Junior is, uh, I think, is a more talented blender. Um, but his, his dad has to develop product that works all over the world. And Henry Kellner Jr. just works with very, very small batch, very high-end tobacco, but never enough to make 2,000, 3,000, 10,000 cigars. It's always a very small batch. And then the cigar will always improve because sometimes they'll run out of a wrapper or whatever the case may be. Whenever they change that wrapper or filler or binder, it's always going to get better. So they may get different, but they will always get better. Right. And it's, it's a wonderful cigar. So. Looking forward to watching you and Chris. Uh, and I'm sorry we're not that. more uh, engaging here, but you got to grow. Got to grow. But this will be available on YouTube before too much longer. Uh, and as soon as it is, I will share out that link on Facebook. Perfect. And uh, if you've got any questions, hit us up on there. And if I can't answer the question, I will hit up Dave and make him do it. <laughs> I'll answer. <laughs> Absolutely. And don't forget to hit the uh, Cigar Newbie on Facebook. So our newbies. And it's uh, it just, I think Brandon just posted it up today. And uh, it'll be something that we'll start dumping content into. But really it's just a, an area where you can, I don't wanna say we're experts, but just where you can ask somebody other than somebody that is in a big hurry to give you an opinion. Because I've, I've seen guys ask the questions. God save you, for those of you that are on groups, don't put a picture of a Cuban up and go real or fake. I mean, oh people God. will pounce on you. Yeah. We'll actually answer the question and tell you if it's real or fake. Um, you know, you wouldn't. You wouldn't and tell ask. you why. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, that's that's just not a uh, uh, a gimmick thing. I mean, you can actually tell. Uh, and I'm kind of looking forward to when we do Adame and uh, Byron and uh, 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 Nelson Alfonso. Uh, 
that's going to be another interesting show. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to hate buying props for that one, though. That's going to be expensive. So, <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> Absolutely worth it. Well, good. Well, thank you very much, Dave. My pleasure. We're going to cut off, and everybody have a good night and enjoy your cigars. You're still on, by the way. So no cussing at this point. No cussing. Okay. Oh, you can cuss. Okay. <laughs> well. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you want to see more of our stuff, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified, hit that bell. You know what to do. If you want to see more Saturday at the shop and Tales from the Lounge stuff, hit the playlist, check out our channel, and let us know what you think. Love your feedback. Have a great day.